Hey, this is Michael Van Osh. Welcome again to the Hark Journal, where we send you a two-minute meditation every day based on Shakespeare's wisdom so that you can have a better life and career. And today, I've got another great interview for you. We're going up to Saratoga Springs, New York, and I'm proud to introduce to you Marcus Dean Fuller from the Saratoga Shakespeare Company. Hi, Marcus. How are you? Hey, Michael. Thank you for having me. This is great. Of course. Thanks for doing this. We appreciate it. And how are things up there in New York? And uh, in northern New York. Oh my gosh, so it's uh, it's beautiful. I mean, the fall, if anybody's ever experienced the fall in the Adirondacks, we're right at the foot of the Adirondacks and you know people travel up here to see the leaves and, and the change of season. And uh, we always joke, we get to look out the window and there it is. So it's, it's beautiful. Cool area. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, tell us a little bit about uh, Saratoga Shakes and what you you know how the history of it and what the what the mission is there and then i want to talk to you a little bit about who you are specifically to the folks that are listening too but let's kick it off with with the company absolutely so saratoga shakespeare company was founded in 2000 by bill finley william finley and uh, michaela riley wilson and basically they had this vision about doing free and accessible shakespeare in in the parks and Saratoga is kind of singularly lovely insofar as that we have parks everywhere and just beautiful, beautiful natural scenery. We get an influx of like 100,000 people in the summer because of the track and all these other things. Yep. But, you know, so we get really great crowds and there's, there's no one space necessarily that we, we perform. Traditionally, they used to do it in this place called Congress Park and they did that for about, you know, 18, 19 years. And over that time, we've done 26 plays, Shakespeare and others. And, and again, it's, it's outdoor, it's free, completely free, it's accessible, meaning we don't have a singular space. If you are walking down the street and you want to come in and, and see it, you can sit and, and watch and be a part of it. You can participate, which happens. <laughs> but it's, it's, really, it's really fantastic. And we've been blessed to, to have it this long. So, Great, great. Well, let me let me introduce a little bit about who you are to the folks that are listening. So Marcus is an actor, writer, director, and producer with over 25 years experience in film, television, and stage. And I want to highlight a bit of that here. <clears throat> 2017, you were the artistic uh, director of artistic development at the White Heron Theater on Nantucket. And uh, you developed and produced a couple of world premieres there, Dark and Stormy, which was written by yourself, an original play, and Evans Evanston Salt Costs Climbing by Will Arbery. So uh, you've got a real producer and writer and director. You've got everything kind of uh, going there for you. I love it. And then it says in 2008, you started a, a company called Camp Compass Entertainment, sorry, to develop and produce independent film and theater and media. And you've done some films that they list here, Ping Pong Summer with Susan Sarandon, uh, Dial a Prayer with William Macy and Brittany Snow, Darkness Rising and One Fall. And then you're also a teacher. It says you've taught numerous uh, courses on both acting and producing at Rensselaer Polytechnic, Rutgers, Skidmore College, Union College. It sounds like you still teach at Union College, acting in Shakespeare and performance. Um, and you're very uh, heavily in involved in boards as well. You're on the Artistic Advisory Board for the Shakespeare Theater of New Jersey. Board of Directors for Shakespeare NYC, Yale University Alumni Board, Nantucket Theater Institute. It goes on and on. And of course, you received your MFA from Yale School of Drama. So again, thanks for joining us. And what's what's been happening with you all up there since COVID hit? Well, you know, the, the world changed. And ironically, I just I I took this job in October. And so I took, I took the reins in October and I have, like every new artistic director, I have a, a bullet point list of all these things I'm going to do in my vision. And, you know, and I hit the ground running and we looked real good coming out of the gate. You know, we, we remarketed, we rebranded, we, you know, put, a, filled the board again. Yeah. You know, we got everything in space. We started doing productions right away. I lined up our, our, my, what would be my first season as artistic director which also coincided with our 20th year. So this was going to be a big summer for us. Big year, and, yeah. And then in March, the world changed. Yeah. And I think as with everybody, every art organization, you know, we, we didn't know. And I think one of the things that most arts organizations are very good at is, is being creative. 
Hmm. And so we had to kind of approach this slowly and say, you know, we don't know where the, the goalpost is going to be. And the goalpost kept moving, it turned out. Sure. And as I slowly started watching all these colleagues and friends and other companies make difficult decisions and calls and shut down seasons, you know, I really challenged the board and my staff to be, I said, this is our time. This is our time to be, we have no choice. We have a responsibility to be smarter than our problems right now to the best of our ability. So what does that look like? And we're creatives. We gotta, we gotta think outside the box. We have to see something that isn't there and make it real. So what does that look like in this time? Yeah. Because one of the things that we have going for us, again, is that we're in outdoor space. We don't, we don't have bricks and mortar necessarily. So we don't also don't, we're not hindered by a mortgage. We're not hindered by a huge amount of staff. There's less than a handful of us full time. Yeah. Uh, you know, so we're pretty nimble and we have the luxury of being nimble and edgy. And so we can be innovative and outdoor space is a good thing during this time, obviously. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so what does that look like? You know, and, and I think, you know, our job is to, is to stay alive, if, if nothing else, all of us. And so I said, you know, we're going to commit, we're going to keep going. We had a slate of shows that we were looking to do and little by little, they started being tapered away as mm -hmm. finances started drying up. People became really nervous. We, we were completely free. So we are completely reliant on donor money and slowly that started drying up. And mm -hmm. one of the things this year we did that was new for us is we commissioned a new work. And oh yeah, uh, I want to hear about this. This is really fascinating. Yeah, so the the in in light of our 20th season, new artistic directorship, new company, new all that stuff is we're going to do a new work. So we commissioned this work. We partnered with an organization here in Saratoga called the Saratoga Performing Arts Center. And for those who don't know, it's called SPAC. And SPAC mostly is a venue that hosts the Philadelphia Orchestra, the New York City Ballet. They do classics. And we partnered with them to do this theater piece called Testament, which was a piece on Beethoven. It was Beethoven's 250th anniversary. And we did it with, we, we got the rights to use the live music for uh, the Philadelphia Orchestra, which came in and helped us out. And SPAC loaned us their venue. It's this beautiful, big outdoor space. And then we couldn't bring in actors and do a live performance. So what do we do? And so we went back and we kind of put, gave it a think and we, we didn't really want to do a Zoom performance of it. We wanted to keep it off screen. We wanted to make sure it was either live or, or something else. So what did that look like? And for us, what we did is we did this kind of hybrid audio performance with uh, really heavy with the, the Philadelphia Orchestra. We did bring in actors. We put them in a sound studio. We set the sound studio up in a way that was completely safe and that every, you know, every safety protocol that was needed at the time. We did it with a handful of actors and then we just edited it together. And that's kind of where my film background came in handy because sure. I understood all those pieces and how to, how to kind of use those in, in a different sort of way and put it together for a performance. We ended up having a, 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 a live gathering that was you know, very safety oriented, but we offered it on our YouTube channel. And we, I think in the end we got you know, over a thousand some people tuning in nationwide. So mm. suddenly we were, had a national platform, which was great. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's fantastic. I was looking at uh, the details of that on the website, which is saratogashakespeare.org. Did I get that right? Okay. Yep. And we'll put it in the show notes too, but is that up there for the folks to go and watch that if they want to? So the, the performance is, it, it was done as a theater performance. So it okay. is, it was only during those those times. It was much more of an event. Yeah. Uh, so, but you can see the photos. You can you know hear snippets and bits. And we did we shot a lot of behind the scene footage with the actors and during the. So you can see how it was made. You can hear snippets of the performance in those clips. You hear the actors talking about the characters. You'll get a good sense of it. Yeah. Yeah. No, it looks looks like a lot of fun. What has been the the reaction to your your actors up there with regards to doing something like that i know we all want to get back on stage but is it what's been the reaction for them so actors are, are a funny breed and i'm one you're one you know how this works you know 
by, by DNA, actors are, you know, they're just, they got a blue collar mentality. They're, you know, give me the stage. What's my role? I'm in, I'll do it, you know? And so as, as leaders of an organization, as a director or any of those things, we kind of have to think for them sometimes and say no, you know, but they've been really amazing. I mean, you know, they, they want to get back to work and perform. I think, you know, it's, it's the nature of what they do. And, you know, it's not just about, you know, it feeds them in a whole different way. And I think this time is so depleting for everybody emotionally and in all these ways. And, and, you know, actors want to act, they want to perform, they want to storytell. And by that nature, you know, they want to connect and they help us connect through those stories, which is something we desperately need right now, I think, communally. And it's yeah. been hard to achieve. Absolutely. Let's turn the topic a little bit. Are, did I read something about you're connected with Skidmore College or tell me about that relationship and, and how that yeah. works? So we have, we have this, you know, there's one dollar in Saratoga. And I said, it just goes around and around. Like we all have to, you know, if we don't support each other, who will, right? So how big uh, is Saratoga? How big is it? I think yeah. it's probably around 35,000 okay. year round. All right. Uh, and then we have the college. Union College is nearby. Skidmore's right in town. Okay. We've got a, a really robust arts community here. Okay. And I think the challenge over the last couple of years is all the, these organizations, especially during COVID, because, you know, it's all those donor dollars are, are tightening up nationwide, really. And yeah. so the challenge has been creating those conversations and being much more proactive. I've been reaching out to, to everybody saying, what can we do together? How do we make this work together? You know, let's support each other during this time and, and yeah. still work, figure out what, what do we have? So we've been really good at working together with transparency and resources and all those things to, to make sure that there is a future. And with Skidmore, Skidmore uh, traditionally has been really amazing and they've been more than partners they've really helped sustain it in some ways through housing they've allowed us use of their housing their theater spaces for rehearsal for even performance we did a, our first indoor ticketed performance last fall nice where all this went down with a, a one person show called the grave diggers tale by lewis putelli it was uh, done in conjunction with the folger theater and it was it was great uh, yeah. you know so skidmore gave us that venue to do that and we run our, uh, our professional theater program, which is a young theater internship sort of thing. And we run that and we house them at Skidmore and they have use of the facilities during the summer and they're working. We weren't able to do that last year, obviously. Sure. Uh, but that's, that's the connection. And, you know, the, uh, the I mean, the college has been great, so. Yeah. Excellent. What where do you see this company going in the next year? I mean, things are so uncertain. Is there, is there a plan to do stuff outdoors anyway in the coming time? You know, it's going to be winter up there very soon, but, or is it going to be, you know, more online stuff or, or what's, what's the plan? Again, I think that's a great question. And the simple answer is we don't know. Yeah, You know, I'm, I'm, we, we only know when it, as we know, and I think, but the plan, the vision is to, to get back to live performance. It's the yeah. DNA of the company. It's what we do. So I have every intention as of right now of doing live performance, probably in the, the, you know, the summer months, June, July, August, September, yeah. we be outside. It, it's probably going to look a little different. I think I think right now it would be overly ambitious <clears throat> to think that we're going to do this big Shakespeare play with a lot of cast and crew and, you know, and set design and all these things yeah. outside. I think, I think if anything, this is a time to step back and relook at the nature of theater, what it is we do and why do we do it? And by that, I think, I mean that, you know, it's never about the bricks and mortar. It never has been. Right. And so what is the nature of, of the work that we do because people go to the theater. We, we want to get back to the theaters. We want to go have the experience again. I'll speak for myself. You know, I go see shows or I want to go see shows and I actually get a little depressed by it. You know, I feel bad because it becomes such a reminder of the time we live in rather than a celebration of, of getting past this time or those things that connect that I used to connect with when I went to the theater. Yeah. So what is the nature of that? And how do we capture that again and give that to an audience during this time? 
And I think that's the challenge of the work. And I think for us, the work is going to look a lot like some adaptations of some classic work, some okay. real small cast, one person, two, three person shows. And again, adaptations that, that capture the nature of what these pieces are, the nature of the storytelling yeah. uh, in a safe outdoor sort of environment. So now you're, you're a writer. Do you, do you intend on doing a lot of these adaptations yourself or do you have a team that works on that or how do I you will do that? definitely be reaching out to colleagues and friends. So if you know anybody, feel free, <laughs> feel free to throw them my way. We'll, we'll let's have a conversation about it. So I am completely open to conversation. Then, and yes, I am, I'm writing one. I am writing one, an adaptation called a Pericles that will be, you know, kind of a, a modern socio body politic response to to it through the lens of of a Pericles journey. So yeah, the, you know. Great. <laughs> yeah, look forward to it. Keep us keep us posted. There it is. Right. Do you I got all of a sudden we got major sun here in Atlanta. So hang on one second. I'm trying to work this blind so I can there we go. Do you see anything coming out of this COVID experience that uh, you'll take permanently with you into future productions or the way that you manage a theater company? That's brilliant. That's a great question. And the answer is yes. The paradigms have changed. Uh, it's just that simple. You know, we, we, the world is going to look different from now on in, in a lot of ways. Yeah. And in some ways for a very long time. So yeah, I think the nature of, again, what we do is, is, is going to change. It has to. My hope is that it changes for the better, that we, we embrace the newness and we embrace these new things. Sometimes it's good to be out of your, your, you know, out of your norms, out of that, yeah. those grooves you get yourself into. I think for us as a company, it's shown us that we can, you know, we, it, the idea that we are nimble and edgy and innovative isn't hyperbole anymore it's we, we proof of concept we had to do it so it's good to yeah. remind yourself of those things sometimes you know i think the use of techno technology of of the the these platforms i think that's that's something we will continue to approach and you know we're going to launch our own ghost light series online through our website that will host all of our digital offerings so whether it's webisodes educational stuff podcasts, whatever they are. And that's something that we, we actually have time to do right now because right. the other stuff got, so that would, that was a delicious dilemma. That was wonderful that we were, were able to kind of do that. Testament proved that there is an audience and that that is very viable to do these audio performances in kind of that really high professional sort of way. And it all fits within the mission still. So <clears throat> the answer is, yeah, it's great. You know, it's it's a new time, and the theater has to kind of represent that in, in some, if not all, ways. But people forget. You know, I always say this. You know, Shakespeare wrote in a time of play. Yeah. You know, and and ironically, his work has very little reference to the ravages of that time. Instead, he speaks of of the uniqueness of humanity, of mm -hmm. of not just the bad, but also the hopes and dreams, and and moments of heartbreaking empathy that. Yeah. that remind us of our humanity. And he did that in isolation. But he, in isolation, I think he discovered and he gave it to us through the work that we're never alone. We're not meant to be and we never are. We never were alone. We always have each other. We have our humanity that binds us. And during these moments of trauma, we tend to shut down psychologically as humans when, when we most need to express. And so, you yeah. know, we need the theater now more than ever. And my argument with Shakespeare is that he, we, he, when we lose the words to express during these times when we most need to, he gave them to us. He wrote them all down, they're right there. You know, and he's given us a language in those times when we don't have one. And yeah. so I think, I think that's my argument going forward for Saratoga yeah. Shakespeare. Yeah. You know, in the in the theater community, of course, there's all sorts of questions that float around, and and one of them is that I've heard a lot is, will people come back? And and I think they will, but I'd like your opinion. And the second part of that is, what's it going to take to get and will you know to get audiences back to the level they were at prior to COVID? 
So the answer is yes and time. <laughs> yeah, they're going to come back. People want to come back. And I think, I think they're willing to take an assumed risk to come back, meaning if it's socially distanced, if it's masked, if it's outdoors, if it meets all those protocols, yeah. you know, there is an audience and there's an audience to be had immediately, I think. But I think, you know, when we think about the theater before COVID, you know, it's, it's going to take time. It's going to take a lot of time. And I, you know, I think it's going to be really challenging for companies that are solely indoor based companies. And I think they're going to have the biggest challenge rethinking how that's going to feel and look and be, because the minute you get people get nervous, they're no longer present, you know? So that's, I think that's going to be the challenge. And I think a lot of that's just going to take time. Yeah, I think you're right. And I think it'll depend on, you know, what happens with COVID, you know, if there's a vaccine or whatever the answer becomes, because we've seen data down here in, in Atlanta that says, you know, this high percentage of people, 48% or whatever, will not return until 2023. And, yeah. but the thing is, they were asked that at the height of infections. And so, you know, if you ask them in two months, if infections are down in two months, they might say, well, I'll come back this summer just make sure that you're just at that kind of thing. So it's, yeah, it's daily. I think, right. I think, you know, for, for as a, you know, I, I play a double role, which is, you know, for your sins, you get the job sort of thing. So, you know, I'm executive director and artistic director. And those are two very different hats. And so, you know, as artistic director, I'm, I, I am looking at programming and I'm saying we are programming. We are going to do this. I have ideas. I've got a vision. I want to keep this thing moving. Yeah. And as executive director, I have to look at this and say, you know, are we doing this safely? What are we, you know, where can we raise this money? How are we doing this, <clears throat> you know, in a way that we're not putting other people at risk as well. And that, that, those can be antithetical <laughs> sometimes, Absolutely. you know, it's hard, but again, I think that the engine underneath all of that is, is for me anyway, it's really simple. We, we, we keep moving forward with optimism. You know, one of my favorite Shakespeare quotes, actually, it's interesting is, you know, it's, it's, it's an Ophelia quote, actually, from Hamlet, which says, we know what we are, but we know not what we may be. And in context, it's interesting, because in the, in the course of the play, everybody, you know, I, I think people approach those roles so off most of the time. And it, I just kind of go, oh, God, you know, yeah. they, it's a mopey, dark thing. But the irony is this, I think it's a testament to Shakespeare taking a person who is in a lot of pain and a lot of trauma. And it's a very hopeful line as I, mm -hmm. as I, read it and as I, I think of it in my life, I think, you know, no matter where we are, no matter who we are, we know not what we may be. And we, we keep moving. This is a theme in Shakespeare throughout, you know, in Pericles and all these <clears throat> getting through a moment, moving on, getting past, becoming better, you know, all of those things. And I, I think it's one of those things that we need right now. We should remind ourselves and we have a responsibility as theater makers to give that to audiences and to, to the public during this time, you know? Yeah. I mean, if, if anyone asks, is, is Shakespeare still relevant? I mean, you have in the last 20 minutes um, said it so eloquently as to why that is the case and I'm going to steal it. Please. It wasn't mine to begin with, really. So, you know. no, no, no. I, I love the explanation. Fantastic. So, you know, I'm, I'm curious, too, what size of a staff do you have there? And is it a year round staff or are you on your own with a couple of people or how does it work up there? Yeah. So we have we have three full time staff. OK, um, we have myself. We have Emma Halpern, who is our managing director and Tracy Liz Miller, who is our uh, director of education. We have a great board. We have a real working board. So we've got nice. a nice big board and they are incredibly active and incredibly supporting. And we use them, you know, we, they, they span the gamut from, you know, technology CEOs and et cetera, to lawyers and, and all these guys. Yeah. And everybody is, is a lover of the arts, you know, where all overlaps is, is the arts and Shakespeare and classical work. And so you know, anything I need, I can pick up a phone and they are, you know, they're on it. They're like, we got it. You need help with this? We're there. You know, what do you need? What do you need? What do you need? So they've been incredibly supportive, which makes me very confident that we will 
we will get through this time. So absolutely makes your job a hundred percent better. I would say yeah. so congratulations on that. That's fantastic. Well, I won't keep you too much longer. Um, so glad to, to meet you and learn about Saratoga Shakespeare up there and definitely going to get up there either on my way back up to Canada one summer or just to, just to come see you because it's, uh, I love that area of the world. And I'll stay on after we say goodbye, but I have my final question that I ask all my interviewees. And that is if Shakespeare was on this Zoom call with us and you got to ask him one question, what would you want to ask him? I wouldn't ask him anything. I would just say thank you. You know, I think <clears throat> so much of it is, as a, as a, I'm not putting myself in this pantheon at all, so, but as a writer, yeah. you know, as an actor, as a director, as somebody who's has a lot of hyphens over this span of their career. I've also lost, I've earned a lot of humility. And I think whatever those words are for me, they changed me, they saved me. They've given me focus and passion, and I'm just so very grateful that he put pen to paper. And I don't have questions. I would just say thank you. Well put. I can appreciate that. Absolutely. Well, Executive and Artistic Director of Saratoga Shakespeare Company, Marcus Dean Fuller, thanks so much. Great to meet you, and we'll be watching and supporting all we can. Cheers. Thank you so much, Michael. Thank you. Thanks. Take care. Cheers.